This is Valley News Live at 5. A Louisiana woman is speaking out tonight after police say she fired a gun at a man at the Motel 6 in Fargo early this morning. Police say 32-year-old Demetria Joseph fired a gun toward a man in the motel hallway but didn't hit him. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley spoke exclusively with a woman today from jail. She joins us live now with what the woman had to say. Bailey. Andrea Demetria Joseph says she's only been in Fargo for a few weeks now. She says she was here at the Motel 6 last night with a man, and she says that man did later kick her out of his room around 11 o'clock last night. She says obviously she was a little bit upset. She doesn't really know anybody here. She had nowhere to go, and the temperatures obviously were a little bit chilly, but she says she didn't do anything about that anger. She says she left the room just like he asked and came down to the front desk here at the motel and tried to figure out something to do. She says just a few minutes later, that's when that man came down to find her and she says at that point she had nothing left no choice but to fire her gun as she says she was scared for her safety just because you taller than me you're stronger than me <laughs> i'm always protect myself regardless i always got god on my side now, coming up tonight on Valley News Live at 6, I also spoke with a woman who says she was working inside at the time that that gunshot rang out. We'll also hear more from Ms. Joseph. Live in Fargo tonight, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Bailey, thank you. Fargo police say in 2020 alone, they responded to 384 calls for service at Motel 6. That's the year before. Enjoy our fantastic day while you can because we've got changes coming as early as this evening. Hutch is standing by with more on that. Hey, Hutch. Hey, Andrea, and good evening, everyone. Another beautiful day across the valley with temperatures that soared into the 40s out west again and Grand Forks hitting that 37 degree temperature this afternoon. Look at Lakes Country, Park Rapids and Detroit Lakes joining the 40s as did Manoman. Friday remains a first alert weather day. That's when the impacts will be the greatest in our viewing area, but over the next uh, well, 36 to 70 going to be under the gun right now. Temperatures remain in the 50s in Dickinson, 40s in Jamestown and 30s here. There's your rain. It's pushing eastward and it's heading toward the James River Valley now out of the Missis um, the Missouri River Valley, not the Mississippi River Valley, the heaviest rains in orange here. Now that's heading into the Ellendale Oaks area. Cullum will be seeing some showers and it will arrive in the James River Valley around seven o'clock hour. 10 o'clock is when we can expect an increased chance of showers here. And with colder temperatures as it moves east, we could see some sleet. So in Fargo tonight, temperatures in the 30s. I think we get rain here. Take it easy on side streets, however, and bridges and overpasses. But in Grand Forks and parts of western Minnesota, you can see some of that mixture, sleet, grapple, and it only gets increasingly wintry. I'll have details on your Thursday and Friday forecast in a moment. All right, thanks, Hutch. We're learning more about a man accused of stabbing a woman in Moorhead over the weekend. Court documents say he threatened to kill her, accusing her of cheating. 27-year-old Juan Pablo Brown has been formally charged in Clay County with attempted murder, second-degree assaults, and third-degree criminal sexual conduct. Court documents state officers were called just before 2.30 on Sunday uh, for a stabbing at 1202 34th Avenue South. When officers arrived, they found a woman lying face down in an apartment with blood on the floor. Records show that Brown accused the victim of cheating before chasing and stabbing the woman five times. If convicted, Brown faces more than 25 years in prison. The House has voted to impeach 13 months. Both Democrat and Republican members fiercely debated exactly one week after a violent assault on the Capitol building where five people died. Unlike the first impeachment, this time 10 Republicans joined with Democrats. Natalie Brand is on Capitol Hill with the latest. Expired. And with bipartisan support, the House of Representatives has voted for a second time to impeach President Donald Trump. He must go. He is a clear and present danger to the nation that we all love. Passions flared during the floor debate over charges the president incited last week's violent and deadly assault on the U.S. Capitol. The cameras of history are rolling. We must act. We are on an absolute race to the bottom. The third ranking House Republican Liz Cheney and a group of her GOP colleagues voted yes. These articles of impeachment are flawed. 
but I will not use process as an excuse. Over the past 24 hours, at least 10 Senate Republicans have come out against impeaching President Trump, most of them citing issues with process and timing. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said today he's not made a final decision on how he will vote and will listen to the arguments when they're presented to the Senate. But a spokesman said he will not reconvene the Senate for an emergency session, meaning a trial likely won't take place until after President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration next week. Speaker Pelosi has already named the nine impeachment managers who will act as prosecutors. In and around the Capitol, large groups of armed National Guard members and law enforcement Enforcement remain on high alert. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. President Trump released a statement today urging that any would be demonstrators violence, no law breaking, and no vandalism of any kind. The president has lashed out at the House's impeachment proceedings, calling it a hoax and a witch hunt. Security is ramping up inside our nation's capital. You can see hundreds of National Guardsmen sleeping on the floor of the U.S. Capitol building this morning. The head of the National Guard says at least 10,000 troops will be deployed to D.C. to provide support for Joe Biden's inauguration. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi took a few moments to thank those Guardsmen deployed to protect lawmakers and the Capitol grounds. I hope that the fact that you are here will be a deterrent to those who have come to undermine our Constitution. So again, I want you to be safe. We want you not to take any risks, but we want the, the message to be clear that the Capitol, our democracy, our Constitution are safe because of your patriotism. Federal authorities have stepped up their warnings about potential new attacks as investigators look into ongoing and violent threats in Washington and across the country. The international advocacy group Human Rights Watch says that as president, Joe Biden should revamp the U.S. human rights policy. In a teleconference from Geneva, Switzerland, the advocacy group's leaders said Biden should bring fundamental change to U.S. policy on human rights. Executive Director Kenneth Roth also said Biden should allow criminal investigators investigations of President Trump to show that the president is not above the law. Roth said President Trump has often been hostile to human rights. Donald Trump was a disaster for human rights. His flouting of human rights at home and his embrace of friendly autocrats around the world severely eroded U.S. credibility on human rights. Roth said the Biden administration should publicly denounce past policies like George W. Bush's war on terror, as well as intensified drone strikes and surveillance under Barack Obama. Airbnb properties in the Washington, D.C. area will not be available during next week's presidential inauguration. The rental company announced today that it's canceling and blocking future reservations in the nation's capital next week. Guests who had reserved a place will get a full refund, and Airbnb hosts will be reimbursed for canceled reservations. The move comes as officials ask people not to travel to the area for the inauguration. Coronavirus vaccinations have reached a new milestone in the U.S. According to the CDC, more than 10 million Americans have received their first dose of either the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. The agency says that more than 29 million doses have been distributed. However, this number still falls short of the federal government's goal of vaccinating 50 million Americans by the end of the month. In an effort to speed up this sluggish rollout, the Operation Warp Speed team recommended on Tuesday that states should now expand access to everyone 65 and older. Here at home, that may be happening soon. Starting next week, Fargo Cass Public Health expects to begin vaccine distribution for Priority Group 1B. Valley News Team's Brian Sherrod breaks down the plan. Fargo Cass Public Health is almost done providing the vaccine for Priority Group 1A, which is healthcare workers, first responders, and long-term care residents. The Phase 1B group is set to start the week of January 18th. Now, this group includes a vast majority of people, including those 65 to 74 with high-risk medical conditions, and staff and residents in congregate settings like group homes, jails, and homeless shelters. This group also includes child care workers, school staff, people over 65, and people with two or more high-risk medical conditions. Now, after speaking with Fargo Cass Public Health, they tell me that the vaccinations are set up with your health care providers. They will communicate with you directly. 
Now, if you do not have a health care provider, you will fill out a Phase 1B resident contact form. After completion, Fargo Cast Public Health will communicate and manage on their end when the vaccine becomes available. Now, Clay County Public Health is still administering initial doses of the vaccine of COVID-19 to their 1A group. They received an initial shipment of the Moderna vaccine from the Minnesota Department of Health. The current supply is limited and vaccine is only available to that group at this time. So at this moment, Clay County Public Health does not know when Phase 1B will get the vaccine. It is also unsure at this time how Group 1B will set up their COVID-19 vaccine distribution as well. All right, more details can be found on your VNL News app. Just click on this story. Teenage environmental activist Greta Thunberg will appear on a postal stamp in her native Sweden. That's part of a series focusing on the environment. Sweden's postal company says they're trying to put the spotlight on environmental issues. The one with Thunberg in her trademark yellow raincoat with her braid blowing in the wind and standing on top of a hill is part of a five stamp series themed Valuable Nature. They cost about $1.50 each. The public support for this theme has been really big. We have uh, received a lot of suggestions, both for like the broad theme environmental issues and specifically uh, Greta Thunberg. Thunberg, who just turned 18, rose to prominence for weekly solo protests outside Sweden's parliament in Stockholm in 2018. Students around the world soon began following her lead, staging regular large protests. Obeying traffic laws is important for everyone's safety, and this dash cam video out of Ohio shows us why. You can see a car in front of this state trooper take the off-ramp. The driver then goes off the road, up an embankment, and ramps over a guardrail. This happened on Interstate 80 in Elmore. Luckily, the driver wasn't hurt, but this video is another example of why state troopers are asking everyone to pay attention on the roads. Coming up, if you think you've noticed prices rising, you're right. We dig into some of the numbers. And we're tracking January showers, believe it or not, with temperatures well above freezing, but we will get colder and we will see snow. Changes are in the offing, a lot of wind out west. We have wintry weather expected for our region. I'll have the latest in your forecast right after this.